Hello, I'm Mark Mix, President of the National Right to Work Committee. Our mission is a simple one. We are committed to protecting workers' rights. We believe that everyone must have their right to join, but no one should be forced to pay tribute to a union in order to get or keep a job. Following is an interview with a victim of the U.S. Department of Labor Harassment designed to get him to turn over his employees to forced unionism. A United States Department of Labor employee decided it was his job to do whatever it took to win this battle over a private employer and his employees. The government official, who was a former Service Employee International Union representative, used his appointed federal power to intimidate. This true story illustrates how far union officials have gone and will go when they control the federal government. It also describes how workers are deliberately denied a secret ballot election and the harassment that workers suffered as a result of the SEIU's card check force unionism scheme. SEIU union goons physically assaulted workers, visited workers at their homes, filed numerous false claims, and stated that they would never allow the workers to have a secret ballot election. With the Obama administration now firmly in power, this is a timely reminder of the dangers of an unchecked administration and an all too real life example of card check force unions and power union officials want to be the law of the land. The video you're about to watch is a shortened version of our interview. To watch the full interview, go to our website, nrtwc.org, and watch Exposed How SEIU's Corporate Campaign Used Clinton's Labor Department. Um, I contacted the National Right to Work uh, organization because I had concern about the proposed uh, Employees uh, Freedom of Choice Act. I have a specific experience with that uh, particular um, organization tactic that I'd like to share. Our particular experience uh, started in the mid-90s and we couldn't understand why we were being targeted because we paid higher than union wage and we paid better benefits um, because we were a service organization and the service is our product and so we wanted the best employees and so we paid the best wages. So when we heard about the effort we decided that what we would do is contact some of these organizers and do what we thought was the only thing to do is, is to offer them the opportunity to let our employees vote in a secret ballot election. We were stunned when the union organizers responded to us and said, you don't understand, we will never let your employees vote. We thought naively that the only way you would let employees form a union is to let them vote in a democratic process. Um, the campaign went on and we were starting to uh, experience some uh, regulatory pressure that was being exerted by the union in terms of their filing of uh, complaints with the National L Labor Relations Board. This corporate campaign manual uh, which was prepared by the Service Employees International Union and this manual is the actual script that they follow um, chapter by chapter to carry out a corporate campaign and it talks about regulatory pressure, it talks about legal pressure, it talks about the tactics. And what happened is that we all of a sudden had uh, eight um, investigators come out from Washington DC to start investigating our company for wage and hour violations. Um, and these investigators were directly from the Department of Labor. We were, we were devastated because uh, not only were we spending the resources on, on all the other charges that were being filed, but now we had a formal U.S. Department of Labor agency coming out to uh, go through all our, our pay stubs and check for wage and hour violations. And we just couldn't understand it. It's akin to all of a sudden the IRS coming into your backyard and starting to do an audit. We had heard from one of our biggest clients um, that they had received a call from the regional administrator from the Western United States within the Department of Labor. He was doing an investigation of our company and so he was prepared to invoke what they call the hot goods law where by the, he would be allowed to seize the products of this computer manufacturing company to pay for our fines. And quite frankly, this is an official 
It was appointed by President Clinton um, that had a lot of credibility and it, it did intimidate the customer uh, quite a bit. The union went so far as to then take this investigation and this threat of seizing these computers um, and they put a full page ad in the New York Times. Then one day I received a call from the U.S. Inspector General. The individual who was appointed by President Clinton was a former employee of SEIU, now appointed within the Department of Labor and abused his power to in, uh, initiate the investigation of our company during a four-year uh, period that they investigated. The net effect was that we had overpaid our employees and um, that was the conclusion of the investigation. Senator, welcome, Mr. Chairman. It's great to see you and so many distinguished guests that are here today uh, to celebrate along with me and others uh, uh, the return of the Department of Labor. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Let me also extend my thanks again to our union leaders who have joined us this morning. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for being here with me. And let me say publicly and personally, and without reservation, you are a very, very important part of what I will be doing in the next few years.